Hi fellas. Welcome to part three of the Top Gun Tomcat build. Yeah, in this exciting episode, we paint some more. <laughs> I don't know where that voice came from. It just came out. Yeah. Ah, it's four o'clock in the morning here in Illinois. So, uh, yeah, little Ringo got me up. He's running around here somewhere. Ringo. He got my pipe out, out, out earlier. Uh, when I let him in my modeling room, I got to make sure there's nothing like hazardous that he can get into and kill himself. So, all right. Well, anyway, I'm just waking up. Got my first cup of coffee. Uh, this in this episode, we uh, I, I show you how I paint some of the some of the details. Uh, I like to paint the slime lights, so I mix up some paint for that. Uh, the uh, the walkways, the area around where the uh, exhaust nozzles are, uh, that gets, it's kind of black and on some planes. Uh, the airbags, which the airbags I paint basically a, an off white, but uh, it's gonna be how would I say uh, just a base, almost like a canvas, because I'm gonna do a lot of weathering to it with oil paints. So. Um, I don't even know why I threw that in here because it was like just off white. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't thinking. But anyway, a lot of you guys uh, have, have enjoyed the last video where I went a little bit more in depth on my painting. Uh, so I thought I'd keep this one going for this plane and uh, just show you. It, it seems kind of boring to me to put this out there, but I know a lot of you guys get some benefit out of it. So uh, for some of you, it'll be boring. So I'll quit jabbing. Uh, I'll wake myself up here and enjoy the video. So let's take a look at what we're going to do next. And I'm going to paint the <clears throat> these walkway areas right along the, uh, uh, right above the intakes. And after I uploaded the, uh, the last video, I came back yesterday evening or that evening and I decided that I wanted to make a few changes. So I ended up dulling down this uh, just a little bit just by spraying some light ghost gray over it. And uh, I also tightened up my lines here. I just basically mask off the uh, the darker areas and then uh, took and misted a little bit of light ghost gray just so I could have some demarcation. I think it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Obviously I couldn't really tell what that exactly looked like from the picture that I had <clears throat> but this is just more pleasing to the eye in, in, in my opinion. So I, I tightened up those lines some over here so I've got some darker panels mixed uh, right next to some some lighter panels <clears throat> so <clears throat> how i'm going to paint these is i'm going to use a sponge and and i'm pretty sure i showed this on one of my other videos but uh, we're going to do it just slightly different differently i'm going to use my infinity cutting mat and i'm going to go ahead and mask off the area along here that i want to paint and then i'll grab my sponges out my Mr. Surfacer 1000 and a uh, couple of couple of my uh, lighter shades of Tamiya grays and tans because I really want to make these look worn and weathered. So I'm going to get to masking these off and we'll be right back. All right, as you can see, I've got a lot of things masked off and I've got uh, the slime lights masked off. I'm going to paint those with an airbrush. I've also got the uh, area back here where the uh, exhaust nozzle is attached to the fuselage. That's going to be painted a darker color. And then I've also got the, the walkway uh, masked off. And we're going to go ahead and concentrate on the walkway at the moment. And I want to add a little bit of texture as I paint. Now, you could come, you could come and airbrush it and probably make it look real nice, but I want to add texture. And how I'm going to do that is with Mr. Servicer 1000. And this stuff, can it acts as a filler. You can also use it as a primer. It's pretty thick. It dries pretty quickly. Uh, but it does, it will create a texture if I apply it with a sponge. So I'm just using a little bit of, a little piece of sponge. And the key to this is to keep dabbing as it dries. And if you do that, what happens is it will uh, get kind of tacky and it will dry with a little bit of texture to it. Now, one thing you got to kind of watch out for when you use your sponge is the sponge will start to stick to it almost like a glue. So you get little bits of your sponge in there. 
but uh, I found this to be the best way to do this. You can also use a Mr. Surfacer 500, which works as, as well. But I want to, uh, I don't want my, my texture to be, you know, in your face and really big. I want it to be subtle, but yet there. And I'll just keep dabbing at this till I feel it get kind of tacky. Now what you're seeing, that black, is most likely the black primer undercoat because this is a lacquer based. And what's happening is this is uh, re-thinning the paintwork that I did, the gray paintwork. And it's lifting it up as I, as I tap it with the sponge. So it's showing that black underneath, which isn't a problem because we're going to be using some Tamiya paints to paint over this again with the sponge. Okay, we'll come around and move it. Now, I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not, but over here, you can pick it out, the little texture that it adds. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and I'll come back, and I'm going to use a few different colors. I've got dark gray, deck tan, and flat white. Alrighty, fellas, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start off with some deck tan because I really want to make this look really worn. It's not a fresh. Uh, I don't exactly know what this, I assume it's, I've got some like tread on my steps into the garage and it's just a piece of tape with a sandy texture on it. And I don't know if that's what it is or if it's, you know, painted on. I assume it's some kind of tape type thing. I'm not. I don't really, I'm not really sure, but either way, it's got a sandy texture. And if you look at some of the ones that are worn, it's not really black. It's more of like a gray to then, like if it's really worn, it's, it's more like a tan or a white. It's really faded. So I'm going to use this tan color to try to replicate that worn look. And again, I'm, I'm getting most of the paint off my, my sponge because I don't want to just glob it on there. If I get a bunch of paint on here, then what's going to happen is it's just going to paint the whole thing. And I just want to add just color and splotches. And I will probably come back and use these colors and... and Play with it until I get it just right. And just right means whatever's in my head <laughs> from the pictures that I've seen. I've got a reference picture over here, but uh, it's of another modeler's work, which shows... it's. Uh, I know I've seen these before. I just couldn't find any reference pictures this morning. On uh, It had a good good view of, of what I'm, what I've seen. And I really didn't want to look anymore, but I found this, uh, let me show you here, another modeler's work right here. And that's what I'm going for, that look right there. So, all right, now I'm going to take some white. And this is just basically going to be a matter of just playing with it till I, I get the look that I'm going for. So I got some white. Uh, boy, it's really bright. So I will probably end up doling this down a little bit with a tan. But if you look at the at the the really worn ones, there is a little bit of white peeking through. I mean, I think that's just a little too much white. But we're gonna come back and 
add some more tan and some gray. I want to be careful because this is really going to stand out. So let's go around the edges and kind of get this in here. I'm going to come back with some more of that deck tan and I'm going to fade out that that dark gray that I just added. And again, this is one of those things you uh, you can do it, but it's not one of those things you can come back if you if you rip the mask off, it's going to be kind of hard to come back. And try to adjust so you want to do all your work before you rip your masking off so and it's also one of those things that it's it might be kind of hard to tell what it's going to look like until you rip the masking off because this might be a little more difficult to to mask up again All right, I'm happy with that, fellas. And once I add a little bit of dirt and grime with the oil paints, I think that's gonna look really good right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint the slime lights. And the slime lights are these little uh, rectangular lights along the side. There's some on the wings and the uh, vertical stabilizers. And I like to paint these. Usually kits will include decals, but to be quite honest with you, uh, they, they don't really look that good <laughs> and when you look at weathered slime lights they're a little bit different than just bright yellow which is what you normally get with a decal so i'm going to go ahead and mix up some uh, paint to keep and i'm using xf3 flat yellow xf21 sky and a lot of white so i'm just going to mix this up by eye i don't have any reference of uh, as far as mixes so uh, just based on some reference pictures I'm going to try to match what I see so I'm gonna put a little bit of this guy in there and then a little bit of just a tad bit of yellow because if you look at them it, they're almost more green than they are anything and I am going to use isopropyl alcohol since I'm not really concerned about a real smooth finish, and because these are so small and masking them was rather difficult, uh, I, I'm, I like to use alcohol 91% for this kind of application, just because <clears throat> it uh, dries really quick, and I'm going to have less tendency of it to, to seep in under the masking, which I'm not able to get real tight. So I'm just gonna mix this up to a color I like, and actually this looks pretty good. Now it is probably gonna dry darker on the plane than what you see here. And it is pretty white, pretty light. But I think this looks pretty good. So basically a drop of sky, a drop of yellow, and uh, a lot of white. <laughs> and 
and I come up with this color right here, which I think looks pretty good. So that was easy. Now we'll go ahead, close my paints up, turn my airbrush on. and try not to flood it. Because it's easy to flood it. And it's as simple as this. Okay, that looks pretty good. It took me a long time to mask these up, <laughs> a lot longer than to uh, mix the paint and uh, spray, actually spray it. But I think it's one of those little details that just looks so much better painted on this way. And I, in, in my opinion, it's worth it. It's worth it for the look that you get. Again, rather than the decals and rather than trying to hand brush this, I just, it's really hard to get in there nice and neat and hand brush it. And then to get a really smooth finish like you can with airbrushing. I just don't think there's any comparison. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm painting this area where the exhaust nozzles are gonna plug in. I've actually already painted the exhaust nozzles. I did that one of the first things just cause I was bored and uh, I didn't film it so I apologize for that. But for this area I like to use uh, AK Extreme Metal Jet Exhaust. Now it's a, it's it's black, but it has a bluish green hue to it. And the key I found is to not completely flood the area and to give it light coats where you have some differences in darkness and and lightness. And it's pretty easy to control. It's, it's already thin. You don't need to thin it out with anything. Just like you don't need to thin out any of the uh, AK Extreme Metals with, with anything. It's already pretty thin. And this just gives you a nice, cool black. And I just really like the look of it for this application. That's about the only thing I use it for. Sometimes if I make um, like exhaust, like burn exhaust streaks on an F4, I'll use this color. I like it for that purpose. But that's all there is to it. And again, it's one of those things where it takes more time to mask than it does to actually paint. So I will uh, finish these up, which shouldn't take me too long. And then we'll get to spraying the metalizers. Now for the leading edges of the wings, I'm going to use AK Extreme Metal Aluminum. And again, you don't have to thin it. And a little tip, and I think I've explained this before, but uh, you don't have to mask off the whole wing. And metalizers do kind of go everywhere. What I do is I just take, I'll just take a strip, if I'm doing something like this, and I'll bend it. That way any overspray is going to go off and it's not going to get on my, my paintwork if I spray carefully. So let me grab the airbrush. Now to add a little bit more visual interest, other than just having the aluminum, there are these little bitty dots right, there are little bitty circles right here scribed in the plastic. And I'm gonna take some AK Extreme Metal 
gunmetal, which is a darker metallic. And I'm just going to come in and hit those little dots. And this is just going to break up that um, plain aluminum finish. I just add a little bit of more variety to it. And I can come in here and maybe hit the edge a little bit right along the tape. And also I'm going to do the same thing. Now I've went ahead and painted the areas here where it was going to be aluminum. And I'm just going to take this gunmetal and try to stay inside and and paint the inside of these little vents. Again, just to darken that area up and give the uh, that metallic finish a little more tonal variety. And then we're going to come in here where the gun is, and I'm going to paint this area in front of the gun, this gunmetal finish to darken it up and also give it a little bit more variety. And I'm doing some uh, acrobatics here with my hands and the airbrush. But that's just going to add just a little bit of interest to those just bland aluminum parts. And you can play with different colors to see what you like. But I've used these enough that uh, I have an idea what they're going to look like when I throw them down. So I will uh, finish up the other wing. I'll unmask everything and then we'll get to work on the final part of this video, which is going to be the airbags. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to paint, besides a few little bitty odds and ends that I'm going to hand paint, like I'm going to uh, put a look, paint a little bit of white with a small brush in where the lights are going to be. And that's just going to let the, uh, the translucent colors, the transparent colors that I put in at the end of the model, it's going to allow those to be a little bit more vibrant. So now with these wing bags, uh, I'm no F-14 Tomcat expert, but from what I understand, these inflate when the wings are in the extended position and when they're retracted, they deflate. Now, when I, to me, it offers um, options. You can have the inflated one or the deflated one. They look really similar, but I don't think you can close up the wings with the deflated one. And they have it where it can be removable. I just glued these in. They're in the, uh, the deflated position so the owner can move them back and forth. Now, for these wing bags, <clears throat> I think they're a canvas type covering or a canvas type bag, I guess. Uh, at least that's what it looks like. If somebody knows, uh, let me know in the comments. But they, they come in a lot of different colors. And what I'm gonna use for the base color is a mixture of flat white and deck tan. So it's gonna give me an off-white color. And I've got this diluted with isopropyl alcohol. And with this, you don't have to be too neat because we're gonna do a lot more weathering with it once we uh, once we get to the oil paint stage. So I'm just going to give this a base coat of this deck tan. And this isn't going to end up looking pretty by the, by the time we're done with it. But this is just going to lighten it up.
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean out my airbrush and then I'm gonna take some Tamiya smoke and go along the edges. And like I said, we, I am gonna weather this and use some oil paints on it to, make, uh, to try to bring out a little bit more realism. But I'm gonna start with some paint and I'm gonna use this uh, X19. I'm just gonna take this uh, smoke and I'm just gonna go along the edges here. Spray the edges a little bit and darken that area up. And you really don't have to be neat with this because it's going to get all grungy and grimy. But this should give us a nice base for when we come back and weather it with the uh, oil paint. All right. So that should be it for this video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a lot of it together and then take some pictures of it so you can see where we're at. The next exciting episode will be decaling and probably I'll have enough time in there to uh, do some work with some oil paints. And uh, so I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching, fellas.